Good afternoon to you, and thanks for joining us here, the intersection of faith and culture. This is the Meeting House on Faith Radio. Great to welcome back to the program Christy Cameron. She is the creator of what is known as verse mapping. In fact, I was just looking back into the archives on our website. There is a conversation that you and I recorded that was aired back in July of 2018, and you actually had put together a couple of Bible study books at that time, Luke, as well as Acts, and now, my goodness, it has expanded. You have released the NIV verse mapping Bible. You also have the NIV verse mapping Bible for girls, both yeah, of them coming out here around the first of the year. And for those that are watching on video, you have your collection there behind you, as well as your yeah. Sharpie markers. <laughs> Shall I move so everyone can see my Sharpie game? There, there we go. <laughs> you, can, right. you can kind of see it. <laughs> so now, now do you, in the process of doing verse mapping, where do, do Sharpie markers kind of come into play? They do for me, my friend. They do for me. Okay. Yes. Uh, as a former art student, and, and one of the things that we love so much about verse mapping is that you take this concept of these five simple steps, one verse at a time and go through the Bible, but you do it at your own pace and you do it in your unique way. We actually have taken Psalm 139 and kind of made it a verb. When you said, you're going to Psalm 139 this thing and how unique you are to God, your study style is going to be unique. So while I verse map through those five steps, for me, I like to use Sharpie markers. And yeah, I know you're going to get some page bleed through sometimes. It's it's serious when you're using Sharpies, but as, a, as an art student, it's what works for me. It's what works for you. And yep. of course, we, we approach the study of God's word in the way that is best for us. And yes. we recognize that God speaks to us personally through his word, and we can have a personal relationship with him. So there's a five-step process to which you alluded, but before we start talking about the, the five-step process, and uh, I was sharing, I was on an interview the other day, and there were, it, the word step was in, and there were a number of steps. It's like, okay, the list alert comes, the list alarm <laughs> comes on in my brain. It's like, okay, I, I, I like lists, so we're going to go through that five-step verse mapping process. But when you talk about Psalm 139-ing, how is it that you arrived on Psalm 139? Oh, wow. That's that's a great question. And I don't think I've ever been asked that before. Ah, so years ago, I, I live right next to Louisville, Kentucky. And in fact, uh, a couple of years ago, I was on staff at a church there, Southeast Christian Church. And my experience with Psalm 139 actually goes back 20-some years before I ever knew that God was going to call me to step into ministry. I was in corporate America at the time. I was newly married and there was a worship conference that was there. And it was actually Michael W. Smith who recorded his live worship album at the time. And there was one point in this concert where he stopped and he began to recite Psalm 139. And, and I'm talking, this is in an auditorium of eight to 10,000 people strong. And it was silent. And it was so incredible for me the first time to hear those words about how unique I was to God. And then years later to connect that to verse mapping for me, because I've known Jesus since I was 16 years old, but I didn't understand the Bible and I wasn't choosing the Bible over other things, Netflix, social media, TV, uh, hobbies, things like that, even reading, which for me is a huge hobby. I wasn't choosing the Bible. And so for me to, to see that connection that, wow, if we are so unique to God in our makeup and our design, it's literally a love letter from God to us. Then our study style should be unique. Now we can have a process and you said the word steps. I don't want anyone to get scared here <laughs> when we say steps. I love that you brought that up because we can say words like research, history, steps. And a lot of people kind of, uh Oh, that's not my thing. I'm moving on. Over. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm moving on. But here's what I love about it. I don't like rules because I'm a rule follower. You give me a rule. I'm going to follow it. So I said with verse mapping, we don't want the rules. And we actually took five simple steps out of what I did in corporate America as a trainer for so many years in curriculum design. And we said, we're going to take those curriculum design tools and I am going to use that and apply it to scripture and find the teaching structure in it. And it's there. 
Christy Cambron joining us today here on the Meeting House on Faith Radio. And you've just released, and I will mention this, in addition to these verse mapping Bibles, you're also a fiction writer. In fact, I, I remember yeah. uh, a few years ago, you and I were talking about one of your fiction works, uh, a work of, I guess you would say, historical fiction about the, the wife of the founder of the uh, the Ringling Brothers Circus, yes. I, I believe. The ringmaster's wife. Yes, that was that was a few years back. So, and you've got a new one that is. We do, yeah. Out Here it well. is. There we the go. The Paris Dressmaker. Uh, this one is Resistance Meets Runway. So it is World War II during the Nazi occupation of Paris, and it is about fashion and fashion houses and fine art. And that's actually where I started in publishing as a fiction author. It took what I did in in college as an art history research writer and applied that. To writing fiction. So yeah, that's actually my eighth novel and it just came out. So tell me about how it is that you discovered or originated this process of verse mapping. Might be a good thing, great at this point in the conversation to, to actually give a definition and, and how you came up yeah. with it. Yeah. The process for verse mapping, again, that uniqueness that's for each one of us, it's inductive study. And inductive study has been around for a long time. In fact, I had a friend from corporate America that said, I heard of this thing called verse mapping. You know, you, you said you want to understand the Bible. You should give it a try. And I said, well, what is verse mapping? I've never heard of that. And so I did a quick Google search. And because I was an art student, I'm so visual. I looked at Bible art and journaling and, and spider maps. And if you can remember back to grammar school, the sentence diagramming, do you remember doing that? And yeah, so I, I saw all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I said, I want to take this Bible. My, and for those of you who are listening, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm holding up my dad's Bible. I want to take this Bible that I was given after my dad passed away and I wanted to understand it. And so I, I really needed something that was going to be how my mind worked and my walk with God, I walk with the Holy Spirit, and how is he going to teach me out of this word? And for me, those five steps to select your verse, to look at the design of the verse over multiple translations, to look at what develops the verse in the original context of the Hebrew or the Greek, to look at the actions, what's, that, what's really happening in that verse, and then the outcome. How do I plan to use it in my daily life? Those five steps that I just gave you will walk through any verse and help you to understand scripture in a new way. So how would you liken this and quite familiar with the inductive Bible study method, which yep. Kay Arthur is someone, uh, the inimitable Bible teacher who really promoted the idea of inductive Bible study. Is it, is it similar or are there are maybe some, some differences between verse mapping and this inductive method? Yeah, it, it is similar in that it is inductive. So you are really digging deep into the context. But again, those words, research and history and steps and digging deep, I don't want that to scare anyone. Sure. One of the ways that we like to describe this process is think of your favorite movie. What is your favorite movie? Does it have really memorable characters, a compelling plot, in incredible cinematography or a soundtrack or everything? You know, what is it about that movie that draws you into the story that makes it come alive? And that's essentially what verse mapping is. You're taking off the lens of 2021 or the year that we're currently in, and you are getting at the context of that story to make it come alive. Now, it's very similar to what a fiction author, a historical fiction author would do, only this is nonfiction. And we are taking the truth of scripture and we are helping people to walk in it and to make it come alive for them. And I think when we talk about your storytelling background and your yeah. desire to study God's word and learn more about him, we recognize that God's word is a story to us. So yes. what you're doing, it sounds like to me, through verse mapping is you're gaining a greater sense of this story. Yeah. And we've even found out of this time of change and the pandemic and, you know, all of the the influx of new things that we have seen that our families are studying scripture in a new way. You know, in a sense, my family, our living room has become our worship center. Our pastor is welcomed into our living room every week. We are doing homeschool. And it's, it's very similar that we have technology and we have tools that we can use to understand the Bible in a new way. So if you can't travel to Jerusalem right now, you can get on YouTube and you can take a tour through the scriptures, through Jerusalem with your kids, with your family. And again, you can use everything at your fingertips to make that story really come to life. 
Christy Cambred is joining us today here on the Meeting House on Faith Radio, and we're talking about verse mapping here on the program today. And I want to return now using that scripture reference as a verb, Psalm 139, and yes, you sir. were talking about the five steps. So let's let's mesh this together. So in using verse mapping, practically speaking, how do you apply these these five? And again, five steps. I'm I'm kind of doing the type A structure thing here, but sure. how do you apply the five steps to say that passage of scripture? Yeah, and Psalm 139 is a long, beautiful chapter. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you're going to verse map, it might take you more than one map to get through all of those verses. But if you were yeah. going to select a couple of verses out of there, you know, let's say that that you were going to just dive in and you were going to start right at the beginning and you were going to say, okay, Lord, you have searched me and you know me, you know, my sitting down and my rising up. Like if that was the verse and you may have selected that verse because it's something that the Lord is working on your heart right now, right? You can be in a study group and you can say, let's go through an entire book of the Bible. Let's do the gospel of Luke, or let's do Acts, or you can do a thematic study. You can say, Lord, I really need to understand your grace or your mercy right now. Or I want to go ahead and map all of the I am statements from Jesus in the gospel of John. Like I want to do something like that. Or Psalm 139, God, I just want to get to know you. I just want to know what you think of me. I just want to know what your thoughts are of me. And so that's a great place to start. So you select Psalm 139 verses one and two. In the next step, in step two, you're actually going to look at what the design is. So you're going to look up those verses over multiple translations. Now in the verse mapping Bibles, we have done the first three steps for you because we didn't want anything to be an obstruction that, okay, I don't know how to use a concordance. I didn't take Hebrew or Greek in college. You know, we don't want there to be any barriers. So that second step, you're just looking at multiple translations. You write the verse down. You look for keywords and phrases that are used over again, or perhaps something that's in the past tense versus the present tense, which denotes something, an action that's ongoing. And then that third step is to look at what fully develops those words, or those key phrases that you've picked out for the Old Testament and the original Hebrew, and in the New Testament in the Greek. And those first three steps in these Bibles, we have done that for you over 350 maps, including one in Psalm 139, because right. you know I had to pick that one. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So you've got the maps that are there, the, the three steps that you've, you've done, or the I guess you would yes. say the, the examples. Um, yes. So then as you go forward, the, the next steps are five of them. So four and yes. five. How do those? Four and five. Yeah. And if, if I'm allowed to choose a favorite child or a favorite step, it would be step four. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, keep, keeping in mind that, that the verse is, is above all, the most important thing is the word of God is the most important. But mm -hmm. step four, you are looking at the actions. So what is happening on stage, so to speak? What is happening right there in that verse? And then what's happening off stage? You have to look at what's happening in the verses and the chapters before and after your chosen verse. And also what's happening in the larger context of the Bible. And when you think mm. about it in that framework, wow. engage your five senses. So for example, if you're in a first century Roman world in the book of Acts, what would it have looked like if you were like me, if you were a woman who was a new convert, you know, Christianity, you've heard about this Jesus, this Jesus teacher. Wow. I want to learn more about him. What would the world have looked like, sounded like? smelled like? What would I have experienced if I was literally walking on the ground in that part of the world, in a Roman first century world, and really engage your senses like your favorite movie, <laughs> like you do when you're drawn into a story? And then that fifth step, once you've documented what's happening and to whom, the fifth step is the outcome. Now, this is so important, and it should be a quick hit summary of what the Holy Spirit has taught you. One to two lines. This is what God taught me. This is how I plan to go out and use it in my daily life, in my sphere of influence. This is how I plan to use God's word and what he taught me. And these are our steps that people, as we were talking about earlier, can customize. Yes. To, to some, as they were, were sharing that, they're, they're saying, yeah, this is something that is in-depth. And as we yes. grow, as we desire to grow in Christ, as we desire to go deeper with him, this is a tool, this is a resource, this is a way, but the, the overarching theme is to know his word and to know him yes. better. So as people connect with the, the verse mapping technique, 
How do you see and what are you hearing from readers as far as a, an effective way to really implement this into one study of God's yeah. word? So many things. And I love how you, you phrased that because it is going to be different for each one of us. There have been so many times that I have taught verse mapping and you can have a classroom full of people in their own small groups and we all map the same verse and we all get something completely different. <laughs> I mean, isn't that, the, a, isn't that I know, right? how the scriptures can yes. speak in so many different yes. ways, all of course, consistent with God's nature and his word, but he's speaking to people personally. But yes, it is great. so, it is so personal. And there have been times again, when I've taught this and we have dry erase boards that are blank and we, you know, my Sharpie game. So we've got dry erase markers and we're ready to go. And we have a room full of Bible studiers, verse mappers, and we just go at it. We start filling out, going through the steps. And it's incredible to see what the Holy Spirit does to lead us through that process. Some people get stopped at number one. Oh, I don't know how to select a verse. And then for other people, they're like, oh, that's no problem. I can get through that. And, and maybe they get hung up at the Hebrew and the Greek or over here, someone's like, yeah, I can get through the whole process and I can learn, but I don't know how to apply it to my life. And that's where community is so important. And we have a verse mapping group that's on Facebook. It's the verse mapping Bible study community. And we're actually mapping through these Bibles right now. We're in Exodus uh, at the time of our conversation, but the community and the encouragement is really where you take this and you use what you're learning. All right. Behind you, for those that are, are watching the video, there are actually four different Bibles. And I know yes. I, I introduced the NIV verse mapping Bible yes. and the uh, NIV verse mapping Bible for girls. So That's there are right. apparently there are two others or are they different covers? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have different covers. We, these on the top, these are the adult versions. Um, so we have a, a leather, like a comfort print version. We have a hardback cloth bound okay. version. These are for adults. We also have this version with tabs and we have another one that I don't have um, here on the stack because we were actually using it. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Um, but it's more of a cider brown leather like uh, look cover. And then down here at the bottom, the turquoise and then the white hardback. These, these are the Bibles for girls ages eight to 12. And so same maps, because the point is we want families to map together. So same 350 maps, but the language is just a little bit more appropriate for that younger mm -hmm. audience. So why is it that you wanted to expand this concept, especially to the mm -hmm. eight to 12 year old girls? Yeah. And it, I have sister-in-laws who are just at the top of that uh, triplets. They're just at the top of that age range. And I remember connecting with them, talking to them about the Lord. And then we have three sons. <laughs> and actually this idea of families mapping together came about in this very office. One day I walked in and on my desk, there was a little notebook. This is a few years ago, a little notebook. And there was a couple of pens and there was a little Bible, one of those little Gideon Bibles, you know, that the babies get at the hospitals. And it was our youngest son. And I said, what, what is this buddy? And he said, well, that's my verse mapping stuff. And I thought I didn't talk to him about verse mapping. He just saw mom spending time with the Lord. He just saw me in Bible study. And that clicked for me that, wow, mm. you can connect not just Sunday school and what your kids are being taught, but you can connect and, and walk with them through these stories and you can do it together. So it was really at the heart of these Bibles that families not only learn to love, to research and to learn the word of God, but that you attach that to a positive experience with someone that you trust, a parent, a guardian, a, a coach, a teacher, something like that, and that you do it together. So how do you make that just very briefly? How do you make that connection? Because I know that you you hear from time to time where families have attempted to do the, the family devotions or to spend time in God's word together. Yeah. So how do you draw the family in to do something like this? I guess that for especially for the kids, there, there may be a, even a sense of adventure or story there, but that, you know, that's just me. So what do you think? Well, what really brought me to that point was understanding and learning a little bit more about how people learn, about how we take in information. Now, about 65% or so of the population is a visual learner. Mm -hmm. I'm a visual learner myself. And so we're going to learn through spatial relationships. We're going to remember things that we see. 
But one of our sons, he's actually a kinesthetic learner. You, know, you can tell he's got to have his hands in something. It's only about 5% of the population. But in order for him to understand it, he has to experience it. And this is the funniest thing. But uh, we were thinking about this and, and verse mapping years back. And he had a question. We were talking about cinnamon rolls or something like that. And he said, well, mom, how do they make cinnamon rolls? And for him to understand, I could tell him, right? Or I could show him a picture of someone making cinnamon rolls. We actually had to go to YouTube and watch a video of a factory, of a bakery, actually making these cinnamon rolls. And I thought, oh, we have to have a steady time that is gonna meet everyone's learning styles. It's gonna meet whether you're auditory, auditory or visual or kinesthetic, it's gotta meet everyone where they are. And so you draw, you know your kids best, right? You, we know them best. You draw them into the space where you can tell they're really getting the information. So for that child, we're gonna spend a lot of time in the fourth step. And we're gonna talk about what would it look like, feel like, what would the experience be to live in these Bible stories? And that's how it comes alive for him. I can see it visually, the map and the Sharpies, that works for me, but it's different for our different kids. You find the internet is more of a tool to Bible study. You know, it seems to me if you find something in God's word, like you were saying, I believe you're you know, talking about going to the internet and, and doing some research as you're yeah. studying God's word, seems like that would really help to kind of gain a sense of the, the context of this material. Oh yeah. I love that you brought that up because in our verse mapping group, we are always trading resources. <laughs> it's like resource <laughs> share down to questions about, Hey, what pens do you use that don't bleed through the pages on your Bible? And everybody's got a great resource. It's the same thing. You can talk about the blue letter Bible, the logos app, Bible gateway, the olive tree app. You know, you can talk about all these resources that we have again at our fingertips. And if you're in a situation where Bless all the homeschooling parents because they've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> but for those of us who haven't or haven't been doing e-learning, finding those resources and sharing those resources that we have at our fingertips, it, it really is a powerful tool to be able to help our kids study. Well said, Christy Cameron joining us today here on The Meeting House on Faith Radio. And if people want to find out more information about these Bibles, as well as the verse mapping community that you have and just to uh, to find out more about all of your work how can people find you online that may be that, that may have multiple answers so. <laughs> well we wanted to make this aspect super simple so the best way to find us is versemapping.com you can go to versemapping.com you can sign up to get started you can get a free uh, verse map template you can get linked with all the tools and resources that you need from our friends at church source and then you can get community and you can join our facebook study group that's actually going through the bible right now and to hear more about my historical fiction that's easy too christycambrin.com all right, Christy with a K. Yes, sir. Christy uh, with a Y on the end, Cameron, C-A-M-B-R-O-N. Christy, thank you so much for spending some time with us today here on The Meeting House on Faith Radio. Thank you.